pace car will pull off onto pit road. The green flag will wave. The cars to the left of your screen are the lead lap cars. The cars on the inside lane of the track are a lap or more down. The nine car, when they yeah. get down to turn one, is going to the top of the race. I was going to say, track. that's Ready. who Mark's got to be worried about Ready. right now, because Casey Caney's been great on the restarts. Here we go. 21 laps left. But Mark's got a clear. Michael Waltrip in the 15th car. Yeah. 15 car who's down on the inside right now, so that may save him from getting passed by Casey Kane. You see Casey's up there though. He's going to the top side of the track. Well, he gets some fantastic run off the high side of these. There you have it. Looking to the outside. Mark, Mark gave Martin him room. for second. Casey Kane in search of his first NASCAR Nextel Cup win. Hey Mark, gotta drive it in there, keep down on the bottom. Scoop. But here's where that nine car really, really gets a run. To second place for Casey Kane. They'll remember the MO all night wow. for that six car has been. It takes oh, yeah. a few laps to get going. He's got 20 left. Here comes Mark. Looking down low for second place. Not this time. Now Casey Kane will, he'll have the lead in this nine car before Mark gets to the front. He'll take the lead. Yeah, it's going to take a few laps. That's right, for Mark's car to get up to speed. And at this nine car, the first few laps is awesome. And they are having a great night trying to knock down their first win. Four years ago, Ray Everham was looking for someone to replace him the 24 car. The guy he went to, Tommy Baldwin. But Tommy decided he wanted to wait for the right situation. He wanted to help build a championship team, not inherit one. Then they came back together. Tommy here at the nine. He wanted a young guy like what Tony Stewart was for Greg Sibeli or Jeff Gordon was for Ray Everham. He feels like he's got the kid in the nine. Now they're just trying to pull it off and score win number one together. Casey moved to the bottom yeah. of the racetrack. Why'd he do that? He's searching. He, you know, he hasn't caught the 38, so he's looking for a faster group, but he better watch out because that guy works the bottom fast behind him. I think he moved down because he saw Elliot Sadler was getting away from him. He tried to find something that was faster. Yeah, he's looking for a different line. He's trying to see what line will work to help get to the 38 car. But like I said, if you, if you try that and it doesn't work one lap, Mark Martin's going to be by you. You know, we're talking all about Casey Kane and Mark Martin, but Elliott Sadler is getting away just a little bit, trying to hold on to the lead in the win, Matt. And both the 38 and 9 teams know they need to make their move and try to pull away from the 6 as quickly as possible as Mark Martin works the inside of the 9 because they know the nine is better on longer runs, and he is slowly making his charge toward the front. Here he comes. Now, Mark Martin for second. If Mark can clear the nine car, BP, he will, he will get to 30. Four. I got two cars in the line, and bursting into flames. Ken Schrader with a scary moment. Dale Jr., the other one involved in the crash. The fire extinguishing itself on Schrader's car after the brief flare-up. And the yellow flag's out with 17 to go. Well, I'll tell you what, that's Schrader's out of the car. Schrader's bailing out of that car. I'll tell you what, that, this caution flag is something that Mark Martin did not need to see. Now, no, you are right. That's an unhappy camper there. Yes, it is. Tough break for Schrader, who uh, was 17 laps away from the checkered flag. And obviously, whatever happened to cause that has greatly upset him. A lot of damage to that car on the right side. He hit pretty hard. Mm -hmm. A little 160 mile an hour crash. That'll get your attention. Kind of pick things up here in progress. Man. I bet you we can get inside that A car and maybe see what happens. Dale Jr.'s camera also hit his tires. Yes. And that's why he got into the wall. Now watch the flare up there. Mm, boy, that was debris that all over the racetrack. See it laying there? Yeah. That, 
these lead cars have to run through to get back. Man. I hope you don't get a flat tire. You know, all that way, be 16, 17 laps from the end. That's that's why Schrader's mad. So Mark Martin, thinking back to the racing aspect of this caution, takes him a few laps to get going. Yeah. He was just starting to get rolling yeah. again, and the caution comes out. Well, the thing he's got to not let happen this time is let Casey Kane get by him because he spends too much time trying to have to pass Casey. So he's got to protect that outside on the restart so he can just make a run at Elliott and not have to worry about trying to get back by Casey Kane. And you saw the puddle of oil, I'm assuming that was, underneath Ken Schrader's car when they pulled it away. The question is, how much liquid and debris, how long does it take to clean up the track, and how many laps will there be left in this race when it goes back green? Matty? And Tommy Baldwin? You've got one more shot at Did you free the car up enough, Tommy? I don't know. It, it, he's still complaining about it. it's a little on the tight side, but and he's done a great job tonight. And, uh, you know, Dodge Dealers, U.A. Day, the W Dodge has been awesome all night. And uh, you never know. We get bunched up here, and he's he likes that outside. Maybe he might trick him. I don't, I don't know, but I'm proud of everybody. Good pit stops all day, and uh, we'll see what we got. Four times this young man has finished second. Nearly won his first next hook up race. They've got one more shot again, guys. So Casey Kane looking for uh, a good night. Dale Jr.'s night has gone progressively downhill, and now it looks like it's over, shy of the finish. You'll have days like that. I'm telling you, in the years, they're talking about the wreck and how bad the cars torn up. They're talking about what they need to do to make these cars better on these kind of racetracks. And that's, that will be the discussion on the way home tomorrow, yeah. Tuesday. So your Elliott Sadler. And you think you've just got a, gotten a little bit of a pad on Mark Martin and Kane. And you just get that caution flag and they get another shot at you again. Yeah, here's another one. He, they didn't want to see the caution. Dave Burns. With Dale Earhart Jr. now. And Dale, first of all, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just uh, Kenny's car blew up there in the middle of the corner. And, man, it was, uh, my car was really loose and I couldn't dodge the oil, you know. So, uh, hit that stuff. It was it was going. Last quarter of the race had a lot going on for you, but I heard you praising the car. Well, we got the car better, and we drove up to about 11th or so, and it, you know, it was really loose at the start. We couldn't get that out of it, and I couldn't keep up at the start, but on long runs, we'd come back, and I was real, you know, I was real happy we got a, we had a better car than we started to race with. I thought as it got darker, we was going to get better, but it just, as it got darker, the right front on my car started working better, and I got looser, so, uh, Kind of frustrating because uh, the track changed so much, you know. But we'll know better next time. Just a uh, real frustrating night. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't know where to be, and I pulled up, and and I got a lap there and held a lap. I'm kind of disappointed there, but I didn't know where to be, you know. The caution. I was I spun in front of the leader, and then I passed the finish line behind the leader, and I didn't know which car to be behind. The car was getting tore up on the flat tires, so no big deal. Glad we're clinched because uh, this is a nightmare. But Richard, hopefully, be better. That's right. He's in that chase for the championship, guys. That's a good news. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. done for the night here at uh, the California Speedway. Race recap just joining us. J.J. Yaley driving for Joe Gibbs with a spin-off turn two. And Brendan gone. No place to go. That's an ouch. We move ahead. Greg Bipple. That's ugly sound. Lost the right rear tire. Jeff Gordon and Matt Kenseth, among others, hit the debris, necessitating a series of repairs on Gordon's car. Dropped him well back in the field. He charged back up into the top five before engine problems. Now Kurt Busch. Off turn two, just spins by himself, goes down, does not hit anything. Gets back going again. He's currently showing in the 18th position. He was running ninth at the time of that spin. This is Michael Waltrip. Had uh, been leading earlier in the race, fell back in the pack a little bit, then had a flat tire, and Michael had to spend some time on pit road getting repairs. There's the problem for Jeff Gordon. And you know, all the repairs I made on the 24 car goes down the tube because the engine. Let's go. And into the garage area for the championship leader entering the night. Mark Martin, Casey Kane. Racing for the top spot. Uh, then when Dale Earnhardt Jr. crashed at lap 219, that was the first of uh, his issues. He talked about when he lost the lap, the penalty, and so on. Elliott Sadler got a great run on the restart, took the lead from Brian Vickers in the 25, and got by Mark Martin as well, so that puts Sadler out in front. 
Then this most recent caution when Schrader had the engine problem and Dale Jr. unable to avoid in the oil. And a night ending in frustration for driver eight. And the cleanup continuing from all the oil and debris. So let's check down on pit road. Here's Marty. Alan, Mark Martin just got the word on his radio to move from second to third position. They said Casey Kane is supposed to be in front of you. Pat Trison immediately, literally jumped off the pit box, met the official, said we are supposed to be in second, we're supposed to be in second. The official said no in the exchange. Our videotape says you are in third. Pat is livid, very upset because they know Casey is better on restarts than they are and they know he will get away. Mark said, quote, this short run will be a chore. He is focused on the championship, however. Did ask where Kevin Harvick, Ryan Newman, and Bobby Labonte are running. They gave him that update. He said, good. <laughs> At least if he can salvage something out of, out of this, if he can just stay there. And he's going to have about 10 laps, 10, 11, 12 laps when they throw the green flag. And he's got a good race car, Mark in this six car. He is good. Hey, he's just, but like I said earlier, he's just... He can't spend four or five laps trying to get around the nine car of Casey Kane if he's going to have a shot at the win. I still think that Casey Kane is going to go the high side and go by the 38 car, but we'll see. Well, well it's going to, we'll see if we're going to have a single file restart or not. Uh, green flag there at the pit opening signal, so let's see if any of the front runners come down the pit lane. The answer would be no. negative. Yeah, first one's going to be a little bit farther back in, uh, in traffic. I think that's it. Uh, who is the first one there? Beats me. Can't make out the car. Michael Waltrip, okay. So only uh, only cars way toward the back of the field, uh, as far as this lead lap is concerned, are pitting. Now, if it does go single, final restart, that would be a big benefit for Mark. Close calls, the story of the year for Casey Kane. This was race number two of the season in late February. Almost, not quite. Matt Kenseth winning by inches. Elliot Sadler beating Kane by feet at Texas in mid-spring. Then in Michigan, June 20th, Casey's chasing down Ryan Newman off the final corner when the caution comes out. Race is over, Newman wins. And Kane doesn't get a shot at uh, passing Newman at the finish line. So Casey in position in the second position right now to try and get by Elliott Sadler and perhaps pick up his first NASCAR Nextel Cup win. Back to Marty. Pat has had a moment to calm down. Mark Martin just asked on the radio, where's Jeremy Mayfield in the running order, finishing the uh, guys he's chasing in the championship. Uh, you've had a moment to calm down. What, what, what explanation was given to you to moving you back to third? You. Well, you know, they do it by the loop, so I guess wherever the loop was, the nine beat us through the loop, I guess. I don't, I don't know. So, uh, you know, we'll just try to get it. We, you know, we've got a good race car on long runs. Uh, hopefully, hopefully 10 laps will be enough to get it for us. Mark pointed out on the radio, if there is one car he's had trouble passing tonight, though, it has been Casey Kane. Matt? Now, 24 hours ago, we saw your brother just about leave a bruise on his leg. He was so nervous. How are you doing? Um, I'm not quite as nervous as he is. That's a lie. You told me moments ago you could barely talk. No, I'm going to wait until about five laps to go, and I'm going to start beating you know what out of my leg. Well, how about the nine? What do you think he's going to do? Go to the high side like in the past? Oh, that's what he's done all night long. He's been strong. Him and uh, Elliot have had a great race tonight. And um, you know, we just had to see. it be 10 laps to go when we take the green. Uh, feel like we've got a really good car, and uh, hopefully the outcome can uh, end up like it was in Texas. Good luck, bud. All right, so Todd Parrott there. Talking about the scoring loops and the way that they freeze the field in, in uh, NASCAR, at different places around the racetrack, there are electronic strips under the track. They'll go from top to bottom on the racetrack, and when the caution is, comes out, they press a button in the control tower, and it essentially freezes the field by computer based on the last loop that each car might have crossed. It's essentially scoring the race at up to eight or 10 different places around the racetrack all at once. And so they determined that Mark at the last loop the cars went across that Mark was behind the nine car. In. And so we're getting ready to uh, decide this one here in California. And then the race to the chase concludes next Saturday night. It's a doubleheader weekend on TNT. Start Friday with Bud Pole qualifying at 3 in the afternoon. The NASCAR Bush Series racing presented by Advil on Saturday on Friday night. And then the Chevy Rock and Roll 400 Saturday night. The cutoff point in the race to the chase. We start with Discover Card Countdown to Green. Tell you what, they will be rocking and rolling next Saturday night in Richmond. Man. As they try to determine the 10 cars that will qualify to battle for the 2004 NASCAR Nextel Cup.